I don't know anybody who rides a motorcycle that doesn't wear Levi's. And it just goes with Harley Davidson, like peanut butter and jelly, Levi's and Harley Davidson. I'm Tracy Panic, historian at Levi Strauss and & Company and director of our archives. We are going to be digging into motorcycle history and the connection to Levi's today. A little known story about a club that's been around for a long time. Levi's have been connected to motorcycle culture for a long time. A lot of that culture coming out of post-World War II veterans, and they wanted to re-establish the feeling of brotherhood that they had had with other soldiers, so they set up bike clubs. Leo Hopkins was one of the early members of the Berkeley Tigers, a predecessor club to the East Bay Dragons, and Levi's became the uniform. Toby Levingston founded the East Bay Dragons Motorcycle Club. It's considered one of the oldest African-American bike clubs still in existence today. And we were lucky enough a couple of years ago, Toby visited along with other members of the Dragons at the Levi's Archives. But what we're most excited about is that the East Bay Dragons donated one of their vests and this is it. Bags was the owner of this. That was his name. He passed away, but he was one of the original members of the East Bay Dragons. And you can see all of the pieces that make this his signature. The member that wore that vest the first time was Bags wore it. It was handed down from that generation of the 50s, 60s generation to Paul Butler in the 70s generation. And then it was inducted to you into Levi Strauss. In our club, you can only wear our patch with on a leather vest or a jean vest. So those are the only two ways you can wear a vest. The patches signify what title we have in the club, and it's up to each member what they put on their vest. Today I have mine, it's the summertime, I'm wearing my black Levi's. Doesn't have to be blue, it can be black. What really attracted me to the East Bay Dragons, I was going to West Oakland, a friend of mine in the car, and they had these four motorcycle riders come off the freeway with the same helmets we wear now, with the Levi cut and these hired patrol boots waxed all up. It just blew me away because you normally see white boys like that. White boys had the chops and all that. And here these black guys with these helmets all matching. That inspired me to go get that bike out there in the Berkeley, right? But you would buy a jacket that had arms and then you would cut them off. And for many clubs, you had to earn those cuts. I don't know if you guys noticed it, but I had cut it. So I put it to a zipper. I, I got the sleeves on my bike. I can put the sleeves on. I said, I, you know, I'm one of them guys, I ain't gonna waste my money. I like my Levi's like this, creased and go to the cleaners. My name is EZL, they just use the EZ, easy, just call me easy. I guess I was a different dresser, I guess. I can't tell anybody else what to do and how to do it. I have a lot of pride in me. Can't explain it no better than that. Tell me about the club and what it means to you to have belonged to it for as long as you have. It kept me alive. If you're hanging around on the streets, and then like my grandmother always say, I the mind is the devil's workshop. So you're gonna get in trouble if you don't have your mind set on something that's gonna be productive. I've been here, I've been here for 50 years. I've been here since 1964 to now. Thanks for joining us as we learn a little bit more about how people have lived in their Levi's. So when's the next ride? Well, we're heading to Monterey tonight. You ready to roll? Thank <laughs> you.